Howdy guys, Cub here. Welcome to Snapshot 18W07A. And guys, we got some new mobs today. We got turtles, we got the phantoms. I'm going to cover it all plus the previous two snapshots at the end of the video. So buckle yourself in. Here we go. And now on to the good stuff, ladies and gentlemen. So today we got some new slabs and new stairs as part of the update aquatic and also some other new mobs, which I will show you in just a moment. So here we have some prismarine slabs, dark prismarine slabs, and regular prismarine slabs. And I presume that they are made the normal way, yep, just with three prismarine across the bottom, and the same with the dark prismarine and the prismarine bricks, just like that. We also got new stairs, so prismarine stairs, prismarine brick stairs, and dark prismarine stairs. And of course, the same way that the stairs are made, just with six blocks of prismarine, gives you the prismarine stairs, and the same with the other variants, so... That is awesome, some new blocks to play around with. We also have a bunch of new wood blocks this week, and that is the stripped wood blocks. So all you have to do to get the stripped wood block is take a normal wood block and right click it with your axe. And you see it does use some durability on the axe. But now we can grab ourselves these blocks, and this is actually a stripped spruce log. You can see this is the stripped oak log. We got the stripped birch, stripped jungle, stripped uh, acacia and the stripped dark oak so that is pretty nice you can actually strip the bark off of the wood now so that is a really interesting mechanic and so yeah these blocks are actually obtainable in survival so that's what they look like in the inventory and yeah really really cool blocks and since it is the update aquatic there are a lot of changes to water and water physics and the oceans themselves so if i go ahead and jump on down into the oceans you can see the oceans now have a lot of different things in them. They have the seagrass right here, both the tall and the short versions right there. It sort of sway in the water. Same with the kelp. You can actually harvest kelp as well. So if I go ahead and punch this, you'll see, yeah, the items initially like float to the bottom, but some of them will actually remain suspended in the, in the water and then float to the top. So you see these are all like floating up to the top. So that is a change to water physics as well. Now, once you actually have the kelps, I'll just pick this up here. Once you actually have this, we can make our way over here. So you can actually smelt kelp in a furnace. All you have to do is simply put the kelp in the top, put the material you're going to burn in the bottom, and that will make you some dried kelp, which I have right here. And so this has a very low nutritional value, but yeah, you can get a lot of it from the ocean floor very, very quickly. So the ocean is actually now a great source of food with this dried kelp. Uh, if we go ahead and go into game mode survival, there we go. You can see if I eat this kelp, yeah, I get one half of a hunger haunch for each kelp, each dried kelp I eat. There you go. There's also a dried kelp block. However, it seems like this is not quite yet available in survival, although I'd imagine it would be something like this if there was a recipe for it, or maybe like that with a couple dried kelp would make a dried kelp block, but hopefully we get this block in survival as well. Another quick note about these dry kelp blocks, although you can't quite craft them yet, at least I haven't found a way to craft them, uh, you can use them as a fuel source. If I put these in here, and I wanted to say smelt something up here, you can use these as a fuel source. They seem to not be too bad as a fuel source either. Like they seem to last a somewhat decent time. So yeah, that's something to look for in the future. Couple other features of the aquatic update. If you go ahead and hold sprint while you're in the water, you will actually start to swim. So there are actually swimming animations now in Minecraft. Look at that. That is awesome. <laughs> and you actually swim faster going down, it looks like, than you do going up. But I think if you hold down space, you can actually, like, yeah, launch yourself out of the water a little bit. Uh, you do have to be careful because there are mobs that spawn down where like the kelp and the seagrass is and they sort of float up to the surface so I think that might be a bug also another feature is that if we for instance hit a squid here you'll see yeah they release a cloud of ink right there so I'll just show you that one more time here let's go over here and hit this squid there you go cloud of ink to sort of temporarily temporarily blind you like if you're right in the middle of it it does serve as a pretty effective shield against the player and they also sort of run away as you saw there, so let's just swim on down here. And yeah, you see the squid sort of jet away from you, so that's kind of cool. I also just want to note here with the kelp, you can plant these anywhere underwater. So I can plant it on, let's say, clay or dirt or even 
let's say gravel if I get all the way over here. Yeah, gravel right here, sand right here. As long as there is two blocks of water above it. So you can't place it like right here, for instance, because it's just one block of water. But right here, I'll be able to place it. And they slowly grow upwards as well. Also, guys, it's worth noting that in this update, we have slabs and stairs that can be placed underwater that don't have the weird water lines around them anymore. So that is pretty fantastic, I must say. And it looks really, really good, actually. So, yeah, that's great. Also, it's worth noting that items will now float on the surface of the water. So let me just go ahead and get on up here. I'll just toss in a iron ingot. And you'll see that the iron ingot falls to the bottom and then slowly rises its way up to the surface. And this happens as far as I can tell with every item. So like I'll throw an anvil, a diamond helmet, diamond sword, turtle shell, and crafting table. And you'll see they all slowly float up to the surface of the world. So there they go. Yeah, so that is a bit of new water physics there in the 1.13 update. And I think they basically come to rest, yeah, right at the surface of the water. And of course, with the additions to the oceans, we have a new mob, the turtle mob. So here is the turtle, what it looks like in-game. You can see it has its big shell on the back, flippers on the sides here. And yeah, these turtles will actually spawn on warm beaches and will return to those beaches to lay their eggs, which look like this right here. You see the little turtle egg right there. And so let's see if we can find one of those beaches. I might just follow this guy. I wonder if this guy is actually going to go back to a beach biome. So I found a beach with quite a few turtles on it, guys. You can see this is just a regular beach, not a cold beach. So if I go ahead and just look at the biome. Yeah, we're in the beach biome here. And I believe these turtles are maybe laying eggs. I can't really tell. Um, but if they are, the eggs will look like this. So this is the turtle egg texture right there. Let's put a couple of those down here. Also, in regards to the turtle eggs, you can actually fit up to four turtle eggs on one block. So if you just keep right-clicking with the turtle eggs, there you go. You got four in the one block right here. And if you try and put any more on, then it goes to the next block. So pretty interesting. Also, it's worth noting that zombies will try to destroy turtle eggs on their own. So you can see here... The zombie actually jumps on the turtle eggs and breaks them. So, yeah, if you don't want that to happen, obviously you got to come in and you got to kill any nearby zombies, of course. And then if we go ahead and switch to survival game mode, there we go. You'll see if we try to harvest this turtle egg in survival without a silk touch tool, doesn't work. It just breaks. But if we have a silk touch tool, there we go. It breaks and we can pick it up then. And yeah, now we can take it with us and do whatever we want with it. So let's go ahead and lay down some turtle eggs and we'll see exactly how long it takes for these turtles to grow up and out of their eggs and then make their way to the sea. So let's just see what happens here. I'm just going to put down a whole bunch of turtle eggs there and we'll wait to see what it looks like once the turtles hatch. Also worth noting that the player can also trample these turtle eggs if you accidentally step on one. And remain on it for a little bit of time. Yep, there you go. So, yeah, you can just stand on it and it breaks it. So, yeah, be careful when you are around these turtle eggs because they might break if you step on it. Another cool thing about these turtle eggs is that they appear to have a cracked texture whenever the egg is ready to hatch. And the eggs only hatch at night, so it's just about ready to turn night here. But you can see, uh, if I go ahead and hit F3 over this egg right here... You can see its tag is at hatch 1 on the right hand side, whereas these other eggs right here, for instance, this is at hatch 0. So these, I think, will not hatch uh, unless it has the cracked egg texture like this one has right here. Alright guys, so the sun has now gone down. You see the moon rising here, and I believe that these baby turtles hatch at night. So we should see probably one or two of these eggs here at least hatch. So let's just sit here and wait for a moment. Here's the real question I know you guys are asking. Can a turtle egg support an anvil? And the answer is, yes it can. Yes it can. Oh, oh, here we go. Got some action. Oh, 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 oh. Snap. Oh, look at the baby turtle. Look at the baby turtle right there. Oh my God, it's so cute. Wow, that thing is really tiny. There he goes, off into the ocean. That's craziness. Now, our, oh, zombie, what are you doing, guy? 
Guys, crazy zombie. Get out of here, guy. Oh, there's another one. Another baby turtle heading out. So it looks like pretty late in the night, it seems. Oh, this one's... Is this one guy going to be smashed by an anvil? Might be. Might be. But yeah, super tiny little baby turtles making their way out. That's awesome. <laughs> and apparently, guys, zombies have a vendetta against turtles because they will also attack baby turtles. So you can see that here. Here's the zombie. There's the baby turtle. And, well, yeah, it's not going to turn out well for the baby turtle. Another interesting mechanic with turtles is that you can actually lead them with seagrass. So you see if I get some seagrass here, I can actually lead these turtles wherever I want. They'll turn around and they'll keep following me, albeit at a very slow pace. But still, that means that seagrass is at least in part somewhat useful. So that's an interesting thing about turtles. You can slay the big turtles. I'm just going to go ahead and slay a few of them right here just to show you guys that you can get some stuff out of them. So, yeah, you can... Apparently they can drop seagrass, which is interesting. So, guys, the next thing I want to talk about are the turtle shell pieces. So, you can get some of these when a baby turtle grows up. So, you have to follow the baby turtle around for a little bit of time, actually. And they'll eventually drop this turtle shell piece. Five of these will make a turtle shell helmet, which you can then put on your head, which I can do right here. And you can wear it as a helmet. It gives you plus two armor. And there you go. Turtle shell on the head. And it also gives you underwater breathing, or water breathing rather, for 10 seconds. But only while you're out of water. So if I jump into water here, you can see now I no longer have the 10 seconds of water breathing. But the cool thing is if you go into the water here, so let's just go down into the water. See, I don't have the water breathing. If I jump back out of the water now, I get the effect again. So it gives you a nice little water breathing bonus. You can also use these turtle shells in brewing. So I'm going to show you guys that right now. So I just wanted to show this one more time before I got any more comments about it. And that is how you get the turtle shell pieces. And basically the way to do it is just simply wait for baby turtles to grow up. And the easiest way to do that, of course, is to like corral them in some type of pen or in some type of tank. And then once they grow up, you will see, as you will see shortly here, their shell pops off and you get one turtle piece per turtle. Oh, there it goes. Yep. Okay, so you just saw it right there. That is how you get these shell pieces. So, yeah, for every turtle that grows up, you get one turtle shell piece, it looks like. So, these are actually a quite rare item to get, but you can get them right now in survival. So, yeah, you just have to wait for a baby turtle to grow up into an adult turtle. And, yeah, then you can do something like this and change these turtle pieces into... A helmet, and of course you guys have already seen the helmet on me, but you can also do one other thing, and that is in a brewing stand, if you put the helmet in the brewing stand, and then we get out some awkward potions, like this, and we'll also need of course some blaze powder, so let's just grab a little bit of that, there we go, this will actually make a new potion, and that potion is called... The Potion of the Turtle Master, which gives you slowness 4, but also resistance 4 for one minute. And then, of course, you can indeed go ahead and add things like Glowstone. Glowstone will basically increase... Glowstone will basically increase this to slowness 6 and resistance 6, so you're basically like a tank at that point. And then Redstone Dust will actually increase the length to 3 minutes. So let's actually try one of these here and see how it is. So, Potion of the Turtle Master, that's pretty slow. That is pretty slow. I actually want to try the increased, instead of the increased length, let's go with the uh, the second tier. See how much that decreases our speed by. Alright, so here we go. The second tier Potion of the Turtle Master. Let's see how much this decreases our speed by. It says 90%. And so, let's just go ahead and drink this. Yep. This is slow. This is very, very slow. Holy smokes. <laughs> that's insane. But you do have resistance 6 now, so that's cool. There's also a new sound which involves putting your turtle shell on an armor stand. Next up we have a new weapon. This weapon is not quite in the game yet, but it's in the creative menu. So we have the trident weapon. Uh, presumably this will, might be found somewhere as treasure, but basically what you can do, hold down right click 
and you can throw it as a weapon. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Let's see how much damage it does. If we can hit ourselves here with this, that would be pretty awesome. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, does quite a bit of damage. Looks like four hearts, so not too shabby. Another thing about the trident is that it works very effectively underwater. So let's just go ahead and show you. So right there, you can see, yeah, definitely works underwater, um, which bows do not work underwater except in like the first four or five blocks where you can throw them. So this is really the first underwater weapon, and it can also be used for melee. So like if I come on this way and we try and take on this squid here, who apparently is in a block. Let's just go ahead and hit him a few times. There we go. Yeah, two hit. The squid, so yeah, it works as a melee and a ranged weapon, and yeah, very effective under the water. There's also a throwing animation for the trident, which is pretty awesome. So if I go ahead and hold down right click, you can see arm comes up, and then when I let it go, arm goes back down. Nice. There are also four new enchantments associated with the trident. So they are Riptide, Channeling, Loyalty, and Impaling. So Impaling has up to five levels, Loyalty has three levels, Channeling is just one, and then Riptide has three levels. Let me sort of show you what these each do. So Impaling 5, or Impaling, the Impaling enchantment, actually serves as a really effective way to fight water mobs. So if I get down here and shoot this squid, I can easily, yeah, get the squid and, yeah, yeah, it basically takes, takes it down. Now, you'll see that the tridents themselves these things don't come back. So that is kind of a pain in survival mode. So let me just go ahead and switch to game mode survival. And yeah, if I throw this one here, you see, now I got to go retrieve it. And it also does take damage when you throw it, like I said before. So yeah, it can be kind of a pain to go and get it every time. But luckily, there is the loyalty enchantment on this trident. So now if I throw this one... There you go. Comes right back to me. So, let's see. It's this one here. And I wonder how far this goes, actually, because that wasn't very far, but... I have the max level loyalty on it, so I think it should... come back from almost any distance. Yeah. So you can throw it pretty much any distance, it looks like. And this thing will come back to you, so that's super, super useful. Has, like, this string on it. That's awesome. <laughs> that's so cool. I wonder if I, like... Hit this pig, will it pull the pig back? No, it won't. Like, I thought it would be like a like a grappling hook. I could reach out and grab mobs. But that's really cool. So that's the loyalty enchantment. Then the riptide enchantment. This actually helps you to move through the water. So if I do this, yeah, you get like a little boost through the water as you go along. And I think you can actually use it to sort of go above the water as well. Let's just see. Yeah. So you can launch yourself out of the water with the Riptide, the, the, the Riptide uh, Trident, and yeah, you gotta be careful when it comes back down, if you don't have loyalty on it. So there we go, right there. Perfect. And then this one, the channeling one, this one is kind of unique. If I just throw this normally, it looks like a normal Trident, but if it starts to storm, take a look at what happens. So I've artificially started a storm here, guys, just to show you what exactly the channeling advancement does. Uh, by the way, these tridents also work out of water in the rain and in the thunder. So if I have, let's see, if I have the Riptide one here, you'll see it actually launches me up because it works well in the rain. So that is awesome. And let's show you the channeling, the channeling enchantment now. Let's see if I can find a creeper here. Uh, there should be one somewhere around here. I got hitboxes turned on. There's one. Yep, right here. So if it's storming outside and you have a trident with channeling on it, take a look at what happens when you throw this trident. So, yeah. You can direct lightning from a lightning storm. Let me just show you again. Right there. And this does indeed work in survival mode. So if I go game mode survival, like this, and then throw this thing, See, it summons the lightning there. That is amazing. So, this is now by far the most effective way to make charge creepers in the game. So, yeah, very, very powerful enchantment right there with the trident. 
It's also worth noting that the channeling effect only works when you're aiming at a mob or entity. So, for instance, if I just aim it at the ground here, nothing happens. But if I aim it at this cow, struck down. So you have to hit an entity and it also has to be thunderstorming. So if I change it to weather rain, for instance. So if it's just normally raining, just wait for it to get to normally raining. So if it's just normally raining, yeah, nothing. Has to be storming, and it has to hit an entity. It's also worth noting you can combine all of the enchantments on the trident in one weapon. So you can like do like a stun attack of the squid, or of any other mob really. And the trident just comes right back to you, and you can also move super fast. So this is a this is a big deal, guys. This is a big deal for combat and PvP, and pretty much anything else as well. So yeah, that's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. Another interesting note, you can't actually harvest seagrass with your hand. You see, if you try to punch it, you get nothing. But you can use shears on the seagrass to harvest it. So, yeah, you get one seagrass for the small seagrasses. And for the tall seagrass, you get actually two. So, that's how you can harvest seagrass manually. And you can also plant the seagrass down on any block underwater, as long as there is more than one water block above it. So, here you can't place it, but on this block, you can. So, you can place it on gravel, on dirt on sand, on clay, wherever. So now it's time to take a look at the other new mob, the Phantom, or the Monster of the Night Skies, or Mob B, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to first spawn in a giant version of the Phantom mob, and that way we can get a look at it, and then I'll show you guys the actual size and how it attacks. So let's go ahead and spawn in a giant Phantom right now. So we'll do this right here. And there you go. There is Mob B, guys. Mothra in Minecraft confirmed. <laughs> that thing is absolutely gargantuan. Um, yeah. I don't know if they can actually get this big in the game. I have actually yet to see them spawn in yet. Uh, but they do spawn in on high plateaus. For instance, like this plateau here, or in extreme hills, or in... Let's say like a high mesa plateau they can also spawn in. Let me spawn in the actual, the regular size one. So you can see the difference. So here is the regular size phantom, which still, I think, needs some work. It's like pile driving itself into the ground for whatever reason. Just give it a hit and see if that helps. There we go. Yeah, sweet. So there we go. There's the phantom right there. Let's spawn in a few more. And I want to show you how these things attack. So let's just go ahead and go into game mode survival here there we go so now the phantoms should see us wherever they're at I think yeah right here so yeah they make like sweeping diving attacks here with terrifying screams and I think these things can also I've heard they can spawn in the end so yeah you can see them swirling up there they make attacks down and yeah they're pretty they're pretty deadly they're pretty deadly so, so ladies and gentlemen, that is the Phantom Mob, and in case you're wondering how much health it has, you can see two hits will kill the Phantom Mob, and it actually drops leather, which is kind of nice. So, that's great. So a couple other things about the Phantom Mob. The Phantom Mob only spawns in high locations, although I have yet to see one spawn naturally. So I'm very curious to see what their spawning conditions are, and if they actually spawn on the block or in the air. And you'll probably only see them in the upper portions of the world, like the higher portions of the world, so on the tops of mountains, or on the tops of savanna or mesa plateaus. So just keep that in mind, and yeah, make sure to sleep, because if you don't sleep, they might come to get you. Next thing I want to talk about is bubble columns. So bubble columns are formed when you place down magma blocks underwater, and you can see the bubble column form here quite quickly with the magma blocks underneath. And you can see all the bubbles are traveling downwards, and that means that the items if you throw the items into the bubble column here, so let's just get up here and throw them in. See, they just go straight down, pretty much. So, you'll see here, floats, 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 and then sinks dramatically right there. So, yeah, that's pretty substantial. Yeah, these float, float, and then if it goes over the bubble column, it just sinks to the depths. Uh, until it, yeah, obviously gets into normal water again, and then it starts to float back up slowly. So, yeah, this is an easy way to transport items downward in water now. So that's very good. 
And you might be asking yourself, is there a way to transfer these items back up? And the answer is yes. Actually, now Soul Sand holds that functionality. So if I do this, Soul Sand underwater will now make a rising column. So if I now throw everything, so you see it floats up slowly, floats up slowly, floats up slowly. And then this one, whoosh, flows up dramatically. So if you're underneath here, let's say like right here, that goes up straight to the top pretty much instantly and just sort of bounces on the top. And I sort of think of this as like the, the souls escaping the soul sand itself. So that's kind of a cool thing they've added. And also it works apparently as a player, a player launcher as well. Uh, not a player launcher, but a player um, elevator. Yeah, a water elevator. So that's pretty amazing. That's pretty amazing. And I'm presuming I sink on this one. Yeah. So, yeah, that is going to have some really interesting implications in terms of item transportation. Another interesting note about these bubble columns is that they actually allow you to breathe underwater. You can see I'm in survival mode right now. My breath is running out. But if I make my way over here to the bubble columns, there we go. Yep, you can see my breath is now restored and I can now get back into the regular water without any issue. Of course, I'm shifting to not take damage on these magma blocks. Uh, but that's pretty awesome too, so you can now breathe here, and I'm guessing this also will restore, yep, yep, so the, the upwards column does the same thing. You can actually gain breath from these bubbles here. It's also worth noting what happens when you drive a boat over these water columns. So the soul sand one, the upwards going bubbles, yeah, you just basically get a lot of boat rocking and you get launched up occasionally. And then if you have magma blocks, of course, same thing happens. The boat begins to shake, but you actually sink after a short time. So, yeah, there you have it. Also, one minor detail that was added back to the game after being gone for a very long time is the smooth camera transition from standing to sneaking. So watch this. See how smooth that was? Very nice. Very nice. And now, guys, one of the greatest new features in this week's snapshot and that is, wait for it, your bobber is now an angry villager face. So it's got like an angry villager face, a heart, an explosion particle, and what looks like a growth particle as well. So I'm thinking this is almost definitely a bug, but kind of awesome to see an angry villager face every time you cast your, your fishing rod here. So yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> And now, guys, I think that is going to be it for me from the Week 7 snapshot, but I'm going to go over a couple of minor changes that happened in the two snapshots previously. So let's go ahead and take a look at those. So let's start off with the 18W05A snapshot. The biggest change in that snapshot is the introduction of the slash boss bar command. And so you can do a number of different things here. You can create a new boss bar, which we're going to do right now. And let's just call this Cub Boss Bar. And we'll name it um, Boss Bar Test. There we go. So we've now created the custom boss bar with Boss Bar Test as its name. And then let's do slash boss bar again. And we are going to set the Cubs boss bar to be visible to us. We just type, yeah, slash set Minecraft Cub boss bar players. And then we're going to do it so everybody can see it. So there's our boss bar right up there. We can now go ahead and if we do slash bar, boss bar set. We can set the value of it. So let's do value and let's do 50. So there you go. It's filled up about halfway. If I did 100, it would fill up all the way. If I did, let's say 10, it would fill up about one tenth of the way. So you can do that right there, which is pretty cool. Uh, we can also change the color. So if you do slash color, let's change it to, let's do yellow. There we go. Boss bar is now yellow. And there's a bunch of other options you have with this command. Uh, including you can you know change who can see it you can change the style of it so I can change it into a notched bar so there you go now it's a little bit notched kind of like the experience bar um, and then yeah there's different levels of notching here so yeah you can do that or you can set it to the progress which goes from 1 to 100 you can also set the max value so if I do max let's say if I set it to a thousand you can see now, since we have it set to 10 up here, the boss bar barely registers. So now if I did, let's say, let's set it to value 100. Now it should be, yeah, one-tenth of the way there. And if I set it to 1,000, it goes all the way across again. So 
that's pretty cool. So guys, the slash boss bar command, obviously quite useful for map makers, but I want to show you guys something that should show you the full power of the slash boss bar command. So I've already made a new boss bar called Minecraft Mob Name. And so basically what this boss bar does is it displays the nearest mob to you and it also displays the health of that mob on the boss bar. Now remember guys, this is vanilla Minecraft. So essentially what this means is I've made a mod called what is near me. What is near me mod right here in vanilla Minecraft. So if I flick this lever here, you'll see if I move around here, now I'm near a squid. And this is actually the real time squid health. So if I punch the squid, you'll see the squid health goes down until it gets to zero after I... So now it's like at, at, at like no health basically. So if I tap it now, yeah, squid goes away and now I'm closest to the ink sack. If I pick that up, there's another squid nearby. So this is pretty amazing, I gotta say. So let's say if I like spawned a cow in right here. So there's a cow. And now if, if I hit the cow a few times, cow's health goes down obviously. Come here cow. There we go. And then if I punch it looks like two more times, maybe three more times. Come here guy. Yep, he goes down. How awesome is that? So now I'm close to a sheep. It's displaying the sheep's health. So yeah, pretty amazing. So yeah guys, hopefully this sort of shows the power of the slash boss bar command and it's gonna allow a lot of really awesome things in the vanilla game. So for instance, I can already imagine the Wayla mod, the what am I looking at mod, should be trivially easy to make in vanilla Minecraft with just a few simple command blocks. So that is absolutely amazing and I am very much looking forward to it. But that is the boss bar command and let's move on to some more changes. Another important change in the week five snapshot is that you can no longer use a flint and steel to light fire temporarily at invalid locations. So you see I'm trying to light these blocks on fire and yeah, it just doesn't work. Not even for a split second like it did in the past, you actually have to light a fire at a valid location now for it to work. And it also does not take durability when you try to light a flint and steel at an invalid location. And this also applies to dispensers. So you see, for instance, right here, if I try to light a fire here, it can't light. And the dispenser, the flint and steel inside of the dispenser takes no damage. Whereas this one, since it can place fire, it does. And it also takes a, a bit of damage there. Whereas this one took none still. So there you have it. Flint and steel changed a little bit in the snapshot. So now moving on to snapshot 18w06a, there is a very exciting new renewable material in Minecraft and that is Podzol. So now whenever you grow a giant spruce tree like this, there you go. Whenever it generates, it generates Podzol underneath of it. So this is actually quite a significant amount of Podzol as you can see here. And it converts the dirt and the grass to pods all around it in a fairly sizable area. So it's conceivable you could make some type of pods all farm. Uh, and yeah, whenever you grow giant spruce trees, you're going to get some pods all in the nearby area. So that is super awesome. So pods all is now renewable. Another great change in the week six snapshot is the addition of a furnace recipe book. So this works exactly the same as the other recipe book for the crafting bench. And yeah, basically all you have to do here is just look in here and let's say we wanted to know how to make glass. We just look in here, it says put sand on the top and smelt it using any of these fuel sources and it sort of cycles through the fuel sources over time. So, you know, shows all the wood types, the bark types, etc. Uh, if we wanted to make charcoal, you see if we click on this and we have it white, again, it pulls all the stuff over uh, from our inventory. Same thing if we wanted to make iron, it pulls the necessary stuff in and then we can put whatever fuel source we want right in here course and then it does as we'd expect and makes an iron ingot so that's cool to have a recipe book now for the furnace there were also some major changes to how terrain generation works in this snapshot namely that the terrain generation is now data driven which will open up a lot of really cool possibilities coming soon and it also means that rivers now generate differently compared to previous versions of minecraft so you might notice a slight difference in minecraft rivers throughout your worlds if you're playing very close attention also, the beaches changed a little bit, mostly because of how turtles work in the week 7 snapshot. And finally, there are some other changes to some other dimensions, like the nether roof no longer has mushrooms. And there's an important change, I believe, to the end, which we're going to take a look at right now. So there are also other new biomes in the end. So, for instance, if I go ahead and hit F3, instead of just being the end, you can see we have the end medium island, the end barren island, the end high island right here. 
And then over here we have the end floating island biome. So they've broken the end up into different biomes. And also the main island, I believe, is just called the end now. So it's very interesting that they did that. This sort of implies that they are planning... Yeah, you can see right here at the main end island, uh, just the end. So they are planning some other things for these biomes, what that sort of implies to me. So I'm very excited to see what they have planned in the near future for those. So those are the changes from the last three weeks of Snapshots, guys. Very excited to see the update aquatic stuff finally get in. And yeah, I'm very excited to see what else we have in store for us coming in the very near future. But anyways, that is going to be it for me today. Thank you all so much for watching. Please leave a like and make sure to subscribe for more videos like this. As always, thanks again for watching, guys. This has been Cub. Goodbye. Boat goes up. Boat comes back down. Never miscommunication. <laughs>